Skyscraper, Aquaman, the Joker origin movie, Comic-Con and more on this week's upcoming attractions episode of Midnight Double Feature. Matt, welcome back to the Man Cave. How you doing? Fucking Struth, mate. How are you doing? You're what? Struth, mate. You know how we're Australian? We have to say Australian things or the American listeners might go, oh, wait, maybe they're not Australian. So we have to remind them every now and then. <laughs> well, our, our accents don't already. We, we discussed this in the prime. No, we, no, we didn't. No, it's cool. The, the fact <laughs> that I'm battling off a fucking dangerous creature right now uh, doesn't already warn them that, you know, we're in Australia. I'm covered in several snakes, but they cannot hear <laughs> the several snakes around me. Uh, Shut up, snakey. His yeah, I uh, have the most poisonous uh, spider as a pet. Fight me, Americans. I, I walk sharks like we walk dogs. <laughs> Speaking of sharks, uh, Aquaman's got a poster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> good, 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 good segue, man. Holy Fuck. shit. Give me uh, the yeah, fucking dude. Oscar for or medal or something. I need an award for best segue. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we could have made we could have made any water related fucking thing, and we would have hit Aquaman. Uh, yeah, what also, do you think of the poster? Well, speaking of Aussies, uh, we got this poster through our boy James Wan on Instagram, um, aka Creepy Puppet. Creepy Puppet. I, I love the fact that his name's Creepy Puppet, showing some yeah. love to the Saw franchise. And I'm digging this poster, man. What about you? <sighs> I'm digging it too. Um, there's there's a lot of hate on the internet for it. <laughs> Did I, I don't see, know if it's uh, hate. I think it's just memes. I think no matter if something's good or bad, a meme's a meme. You know. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's still pretty. There's not that much to talk about it because, like, it's still like it's still a teaser poster. Like, it doesn't really show much. It just shows fucking fucking water, water animals, and and. <laughs> <laughs> and Aquaman, like, oh, just well, ready. He's got some sharks. If you look carefully, there's a couple of killer whales. Yeah. So- <laughs> sea world's um, not mad at that. But but did you see the um, other Aquaman um, I did. image release? I did. The, the exclusive Den of Geek uh, cover. That looks pretty cool. Now, that's some fucking shit to talk about right there, mate. Yeah. I mean- that's, that, that looks pretty cool. It's looking like some Guardians of the Galaxy type bullshit, which is- Totally what a film like this needs. It's so insanely comic book accurate. Um, loving every time we see an image or something relating to Black Manta's mask. I was getting so stoked. He's not the most interesting character out there, but he's one of the fucking coolest looking villains, um, at least for Aquaman's side of things. But yeah, I don't know it's, jack shit about him at oh, all. Oh man, he's he's just he's just gonna he's just like if Hey Arnold. Remember, hey Arnold, hey football head. <laughs> hey football if he head. was, if he was like, mix him with Darth Vader, that's him. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That's okay. Straight well, up. I like straight the Darth up. Vader I got, part. I got to Photoshop that. I want. I want. I want to see hey Arnold cosplaying as Darth Vader because that's that's Black Manta. Yeah. Um. And and um, everything else we're seeing on that um, Denner Geek I- I- image, it's it's so they're going balls to wall comic book accurate. Um. They're doing they're doing what Marvel does where they take these. Crazy bonkers concepts, and you go, oh well, that won't work on screen, and then just like fuck it, let's do it anyways. And for some reason, it's still cool. Like remember in the early two thousands when they're making like the X Men movies and like shit, we've got to put them all in leather because no one's gonna like they're gonna freak out if the costume's yellow. But now it's like fuck it, give him a football head, <laughs> you know? Well, Patrick Wilson looks pretty cool. He uh, does with, like, look with pretty that cool. mask, and uh, I like Patrick Wilson as an actor, so. Yeah, and that mask is straight out of the comics too, man. Um, pretty stoked on that. Um, you know what? I'm really looking forward to seeing this trailer, which comes out on Saturday um, for Comic-Con. I, um, yeah. Man, just we been wanting to see some fucking footage for what feels like a thousand years. And um, you know what? Even if this movie sucks, I'm st- even if the trailer is terrible, I'm still hyped to see it. I don't know why. I think it's just like maybe I want to see if Jason Momoa can carry a film by himself. I, I don't think he can, to be honest. Yeah, like, I feel like he's gonna. We're gonna end up walking away. Like he's like the Hulk. He's better as a side character, where he's like, you know, like like. And I'm not saying Jason Momoa. I'm saying like Aquaman, because like the whole bro attitude. 
I've never really seen a film where a character that that's fucking like the annoyed lead. me. The whole bro, the whole bro thing in uh, Justice League. Oh my god, I fucking hated it. I was just well, like, why are you being like this? I kind of like it, man, but I like it because we're getting it as like a side thing. You know, if we get a whole movie of that, that might take a bit um, to take. But you know, I'm sure the fucking fans of Fast and the Furious and shit will dig it. I don't know. Um, but anyways, like, still keen to see hey, how this goes what down. what are you saying? I'm, I'm a fan of Fast and Furious. It's it's like total broness, you know? And I'm a huge Fast and Furious fan, but I'm a total bro as well, you know? Um, I'm, dr- <laughs> I'm drinking a fucking beer right now, and I was just listening to Kendrick <laughs> Lamar. So, fuck yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. But all right. speaking of, speaking of um, fucking- Don't fucking segue me movies, again. Don't I'm fucking segue me again. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm um, so speaking of DC movies. I'm um, Shazam. Uh, what's going on there? <laughs> oh, I'm just um, speeding 100 miles an hour on this segue. It's the fastest fucking segue you've seen out here, mate. <laughs> hey, Matt, can yeah. you uh, lend me some of that cocaine, whatever you're on over there? I'm, I'm just hyped, man. <laughs> Comic Con's a great time of year. It gets me stoked. It is a good. It is a good time of the year. Uh, but I mean, like you know, unfortunately, Marvel aren't going to be there this year, which kind of sucks. Don't make um, me cry. We'll make this episode get uh, really emo, all right. and I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I'm. 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 I'm keen for Shazam. Like I'm always going in positives with comic book movies. Oh, uh, sorry, positive with comic book movies. Um. You know, I. I don't really know much about the the lead actor from Chuck. I don't Man, know much about him. I don't think many people know many things about him, to be honest. Other than he had that, he had a breakdown on, I think, I'm going to say Twitter. Um, well, he was on Thor. Under- he was in Thor. Wait, what? Who was he in Thor? Yeah. He was, uh, sorry, Zachary Levi is his name. He was one of the Warriors 3. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um- yeah, his name was Fan Fandral in Thor, but um, the the director of, of Shazam uh, kind of excites me uh, because it's the director of Lights Out, um, and Lights Out was pretty good. Oh. I, I I I dug Lights Out. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, as horror movies go these days, you know, it's pretty pretty strong. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was uh, well, so that's two like- horror directors doing two superhero films that look to be. Like they're both kind of lighthearted ish. Yeah. For DC. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. I know. Something's going on with DC, man. Like, cause I'm I'm stoked for both these films. And you know how much I dislike all the DC EU films so far, man. Like that being I said. Know. I don't know. I don't know about stoked. Uh, I wouldn't I'm, say I'm stoked. I'm stoked, man, because I like I think there's so much cool shit you could do with Shazam. Because um I guess at the end of the day, it's Dwayne Johnson's character in Jumanji. It's like a little kid who's in a big muscular dude's body who's like amazed he has biceps and shit. Um, That's basically the whole gimmick and how excited he is. But like, I love that sense of like wonder and I like the idea of having a fun character having fun, which is definitely, definitely what um, DCEU needs. Um, there was a bit of um, there was a bit of leaked footage that came out this week that I managed to have oh, a look at. I have not it seen looked, this. It kind of looked a little bit like Hancock. Whoa! Uh, like, like that, like that kind of like lighthearted, but still like really whimsical, kind of weird humor. Um, he he Hancock. fights. Yeah, there's a fight where there's a scene where he's like like really like like a split second thing where he's like fighting Mark Strong's villain, uh, Doctor Thaddeus Siv- Savannah is his name, I think. Um, I don't know. And Mark Strong's Mark Strong's awesome. I'd watch Mark Strong in anything. Hell, I have watched Mark Strong in anything. Fucking Green Lantern. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say this now. I don't think it's gonna happen. But for many many years, we know Dwayne Johnson's been attached. To DC or Shazam in some way as the character Black, um, fuck, what's Black his Adam. name? Black Adam, right? I was going to call it Black Lightning, but that's that's a whole different character. Um, Bla- well, Black, Black Adam, um, <laughs> um, Black Adam. But I want to say, like, he's like the the Lex Luthor for Shazam. Like, you know how like all these superheroes oh, okay. have like yep. a bad guy version who's like the exact same of them. Like fucking. Yeah. You know, Iron Man had Iron Monger, Ant Man had mm-hmm. Yellow Jacket. That's Somewhere like now. the equivalent there. Um, and yeah. the fact, I don't know, they better. I want to see a cameo from Dwayne Johnson in that film. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, 
because I think he he only wants to be a lead hero in films now. But uh, I, I can't see him something. being a second fiddle. Yeah, like um, he wouldn't allow it. Um, yeah. But- well, speak speaking of Dwayne Johnson, Hi. we watched Skyscraper. Well, let's let's oh, throw in a little segue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> let's well, throw it out. <laughs> We're just it's chilling just here in Segway City. Today. We're in Segway yeah. City right now. I know. Um, <laughs> let's let's throw in our little review here. Um, Matt, what did you think of Skyscraper? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, what did I say? I think it's like a mm. 6 out of 10. Um, it's a 6 out of- It's a light 6 out of 10. It's- um. Uh, the way I could best describe it, it's it's Dwayne Johnson trying to do his movie San Andreas, but he's setting it in a skyscraper. Like the ads kind of gave me, what got me a little bit hyped for it was I was kind of get a real diehard vibe, um, but it's not a guy fighting terrorists in a building. It's, it's mostly the writers coming up with ways to get Dwayne Johnson to just be around heights. It's like they got that scene from... Um, Mission Impossible. Is it Rogue Nation? The one where he runs down the building? No, no. Um, it's Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Ghost there's Protocol. Literally like, there is a scene that's lifted right off Ghost Protocol. I feel there's like at least there's this one scene to lift off that. And there's like one or two other scenes that's totally trying to be in the same realm or vibe. But the thing, the massive difference is it's definitely green screen. It's decent green screen and CGI, but it's it's nowhere on the same level of what Tom Cruise is doing. Look, ultimately, right, exactly. I think the movies, it's not terrible. Uh, there are some massive leaps in logic, um, but ultimately it's strong performances keeping it together. Dwayne Johnson it just has this insanely charismatic charm that you can't, that you have to enjoy. I really liked, um, what's her name? The chick from Scream. Um... Nev Campbell. That's it. Boom. She's cool. It's nice seeing her on screen again because I haven't seen her in a while. Um, yeah, overall, like, there's not much going on. It's, it's, I was saying to you when I saw it, um, it's, it's kind of like I feel like he wanted to do a, f- a horror film or a film where we can see uh, The Rock be scared, <laughs> but it's unbelievable to see him scared against anyone because he's so massive and yeah. intimidating. So it's like, fuck right. it, this, let's have him be scared of nature and heights and fire and things he can't control. But yeah, overall, it's like a light six out of ten, I reckon. If I'm if I'm being nice, it's it's okay to have popcorn too, but it's nothing to get your get get too excited about. But what did you think? I um I had some time to think about it, man. And I initially had it as a five. I'm going to say it's just bad. It's a four. Um, uh, and I'll tell you why. I think um, for every reason that you said, but also because like the, nothing, there's nothing remarkable about it. Like there's nothing, literally there was no kind of like scene or sequence that I was like, oh, this is new or this is exciting. Like literally... They set the stakes at the start, like right at the start, they tell you all about the building, all of its kind of like security protocol and its measures and things like that. And then you're like, okay, so this is going to happen. This is going to happen. So that's going to go wrong. That's going to fail. Like, you know, it and was then like- insanely predictable. In fact, right. I think in scene two, because we saw it together, there's a line where slight spoilers, I guess. No, it's not really spoilers, but she goes to him. Oh, you, what about your friend? He's your best friend. And straight away, you go, you look to me and go, he's going to betray him and be the bad guy. And 20 minutes later, that shit fucking happens. Like, yeah, it, was, exactly. it was pretty obvious. And then, like, I was literally thinking, okay, so this, this fucking mirror room is going to be used at the end. Like, this is going to come back for sure. Yeah, Bruce Lee style. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. And lo and behold, there it was. Um and like, why was there even a mirror room in the first place? Like, I get what I get the whole cameras on the outside thing, like that. But I don't get why the mirrors come up. Like, uh, that's fucking weird. Um, anyway, like it was just it was just to kind of set up the whole "I'm behind you" thing. Because like, I don't even care about spoilers for this podcast. Um, like, you can yeah. fuck off. Like, I, I don't <laughs> care about skyscraper. Uh, but yeah, uh, like there was no one out there is gonna it. be like, "Oh, dude, you ruined the ending for skyscraper." One star, unsubs- unsubscribe. Oh. Like fucking see you later. But no, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just didn't like it. I, like it was, there was nothing memorable at all. Like the action sequences were just kind of boring. It was literally like 
cut to this guy he's shooting cut to them like these guys they're shooting i did think the action was poorly edited it was poorly edited and like there was like no good like choreographing um even like some of the scenes where he's like hanging outside there was like some really good like kind of like vertigo moments but like then you realize oh shit it's only a green screen so there's like no stakes at all or at all here well, um I, I kind of agree with what you're saying except i i, I will want to add in i think the film at times not all the time but at times it was pretty good at building tension like I think the leading up like to what? him, like where, like leading up to him running off the the thing to to jump into the building while the cops were sort of like trying to get behind him and stuff. Like I think they did a good job of building to that. Um, but that's if you ignore other dumb shit, like the fact that he climbed ninety seven stories in the space of five minutes. <laughs> Um, but but I don't care about that. I don't care about that. That's that's movie. That's 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 action movie bullshit. Like that's not what I'm talking about. I can suspend my disbelief for that. Um, you know, like that's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like just things that things that don't stand out to me. Like things that like just make make this a forgettable movie. It was like, forgettable, but like I don't think it was so bad that I'm going to be in a cinema and go on fuck this shit like I was with I don't know Tomb <clears throat> Raider. Where it was just no. boring my fucking dick off. Well, this was more boring to me than fucking Tomb Raider, I thought. No, <laughs> like, but, if but you, you about walked it. out on Tomb Raider. Yeah, I did. But still, like, <laughs> that like that was probably, like, because I saw it by myself. But, like... Uh, well, let um, me ask you this, because I know you didn't enjoy Pacific Rim Uprising. What's better? Wait, Pacific wait, Rim wait, Uprising wait, wait, wait. or this? Mm, Pacific Rim. Um, okay. But listen, listen, like, uh, I'd, I'd like... The villains were terrible. Like, seriously, there was, like, three different, like, villains. Like, each kind of had their own sort of, like, portion of the movie. You had, like, his friend, and then you had this British random fucking insurance guy. (laughs) And, like, it's not even explained how he became a part of, like, the thing. Like, if he's, like, signing off insurance, like, how is he, how did he, like, become entangled with the terror or whatever the fuck they are. And then you've got this, like, Botha guy, um, like, who's from, like, Scandinavia or some shit. Like, you know, like, there's no, like, clearly... There is a clearly defined villain, but, like... And then, like, what's their plan? They're going to parachute to the off-site, like, facility, meet up with the Asian Ruby Rose chick, and then, like, leave? She like, was no. definitely an Asian Ruby Rose. Like, 100%. Yeah. Like, at one point, I yeah. literally thought it was Ruby Rose. Yeah, uh, but then, like, like what are you going to do? You're going to parachute off this massive building while the cops are looking at the building because it's on fire like you don't think the you don't think they're gonna <laughs> well, like look, see you i don't want to defend down? this movie i do not want to defend this movie but that was their plan b they had a helicopter before that um which but but i guess that leads to another problem with this film is that um admittedly and this is just me just going in thinking this movie was written for 12 year old boys like not sophisticated movie watchers but like the film had a big problem with it had so all these crazy ideas but it took so long to set them up because they had to put all these other chess pieces in place so they overcomplicated every fucking little thing like for them to just establish the fact that the the wife and kids were like locked in a room and but only one floor was on fire but the others weren't it felt like it took them 20 minutes of exposition through a series of 10 different characters to sort of disguise all that when well, you could have just said fuck it make the whole building on fire you know? But then, like, but then you've got, like, other shit as well. Like, the cops are on the ground just, like, kind of waiting for something to happen. Like, they literally have no no plan, like, whatsoever. No, There's literally like, no point in the film where they're like, hey, let's yeah. call a fire brigade. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, like seriously, eventually, okay, so at the start, they th- they think that the entire building is empty. Um, but then uh, when, when, when the, the Rock's wife comes down and says, oh, hey, fucking, there are people trapped in there. Actually, no, I take that back. The cops know that the, the, the creator of the building, uh, the designer, is in this penthouse. So, like, why not send a rescue team to land on the roof and rescue him and extract him? Like, I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> True. Like, it's the 96th story that's on fire. Like, I don't get why you don't rappel down and... Or even, like, just put any kind of, like, action, like, rescue action plan into fucking effect. Like, it's just... It's just this movie dumb- is <sighs> riddled with plot holes and stuff. But I think the reason I'm more forgiving of it than you is, if I have to be ultimately honest, Dwayne Johnson's weird aspect of his career, it seems like all his films are aimed at, like, preteen males and where, like, logic doesn't... 
matter. It's just like it's all style over everything. So I go in with this expectation that his films are meant to make a lot of money and stuff, but not meant to make a lot of sense. Because how many many high quality films is this guy in these days? So I go in with these low expectations. So maybe but I'm this just isn't surprised. even this, this isn't even we didn't even get it. It wasn't even good. Good Dwayne Johnson. Like it was. Oh it was no, okay. it wasn't good. Which is why I gave it, it was, a six. It was, it was okay, Dwayne Johnson. Like yeah. good Dwayne Johnson was Jumanji. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. he was actually pretty good in it. He was really charismatic and funny in it. And this was just like, oh my god, we're uh, here again. Straight like, up though, Dwayne Johnson, I feel can't do comedy. He only he's tried it so many times, and the only good one has been Jumanji. I watched Central Intelligence the other day, and I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Like, People, uh, he's, people he's, always he's, seem to forget about oh, Welcome to the Jungle. He's pretty funny in that. Uh, it's called The Rundown in America. Uh, yeah, but like, I watched that thinking, like, I've been in that as an action movie, to be honest. And really, Stifler's doing most of the co- comedic work there. Also, side yeah, but- note, how come no one's talking about the fact that Dwayne Johnson's been in two films called Welcome to the Jungle? We got Welcome to the Jungle... Or yeah. slash the rundown, and we've got Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. This motherfucker yeah. loves jungles. He's been- anyway. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not burning. I'm not burning any more time on skyscraper. Let's move on because yeah. fuck that shit. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, we've got. Uh, we spoke briefly on Comic Con. Uh, Marvel's um, not going to be there. Um, James Gunn is teasing something. Um, he put a, he put a poster on his uh, Instagram. Uh, look, my, it looks like it'll be like an indie horror movie. I know he produced the Belko experiment. Um, so, I'm pretty keen to see what that is. Uh, Sony apparently have some big shit lined up. Um, do you I think, think we're going to see. Does that mean we're getting Spider Man? Yeah, we'll get. Um, I don't think we'll get Spider Man. I think we'll get a lot of Venom. I think we'll get a lot of Glass. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's Lines Glass. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so, I wouldn't be surprised uh, um, if we get some announcements with Spider Man because they just announced, I believe casting for the character of chameleon i don't remember who it is i, I can't say i can't say i was getting any more spider-man to be honest no no i don't think we're getting footage but i i have a feeling what they're trying to do is it's my understanding with the original sharing arrangement this is meant to be the last spider-man film they do spider-man 3 homecoming 3 whatever wasn't in the mix but it looks like probably they're going to renegotiate and agree to that but i think what they're trying to gear up towards is the sinister six because back when they were doing Amazing mm. Spider-Man with the fucking Garfield movies, they wanted to do a spin-off for that. The last film, they introduced Scorpion, Sword of the Shocker, and Vulture. And in this movie, we know we're getting Mysterio with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Or I don't know if they actually have locked that in, but we know that's in talks. They do Chameleon. That's like, he's literally the first villain Spider-Man ever had in the comics. And then it's like, there's also rumors going around of there's there's some dodgy photo online. It's hard to tell if it's real or not, but supposedly it's concept art of Hydro Man, which is basically Sandman, but water. Because, <laughs> you know, Marvel loves being creative lame. like that. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. He's kind of lame. No, but don't I like even him. go there. Don't even go there. Um, it's fucking lame. But yeah, lame. so okay, hopefully that's leading up to some sort of badass team up movie. So I'd love to see that sort of announcement, but, you know, I'm not going to get my hopes up. We're definitely not getting footage because they've just started production recently. Um. Yeah. Uh, Anything else from Sony? Um. No. That's 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 all I really had much to talk about in Comic Con. Just the fact that Marvel's not going to be there is pretty shitty. Yeah. DC will be there. Um, uh, they'll but, be. But, we're but expecting. We were talking what? about Aussies earlier, and we were talking about Marvel. We should probably talk uh, no, about. No, no, wait, wait. I'm not segueing yet. Hold on. I'm oh, not segueing oh, 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 yet. Oh, oh, I'm okay. still on. I'm still on Comic Con. Don't don't get smart with me, Matt. <laughs> don't get smart with me. Okay. Um. Yeah, so uh, DC is going to be there. Um, hopefully, we'll get some Wonder Woman. We'll probably, like we said, we'll get some Shazam. We'll get some uh, Aquaman. Um, okay, so let's talk about... Uh, I did want to talk about... A few directors have come out about uh, toxic fan culture. Have you seen this? Um, I've heard rumblings and I think we've all, I think a lot of people with their heads screwed on have been thinking about it for a while. Hey. Yeah. Well, number one, um, James Mangold, who directed the amazing, amazing, amazing Logan. Um, he's come out and just kind of like talked about it. He said at the point when writing and directing big franchises has become the emotional 
emotionally loaded equivalent of writing a new chapter of the Bible, then a lot of bolder minds are going to leave these films to hacks and corporate boards. That's pretty, that's pretty uh, solid. And to be fair, that's kind of happened a little bit as it is. Like one thing in the early days, especially for Marvel, they, they, they always, they wanted yes men rather than people with creative visions as directors. I think we're seeing, they're now, now, I think James Gunn really opened the doors for Marvel, like to be more trusting with people. And I was seeing them work with people like Ryan Coogler and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. But yeah, man, they're scaring they're scaring people off. Well, it's funny. Stuff. It's funny. It's funny that you say that. You know, they already have. Like, you know, it's already kind of moving to hacks and corporate boards because someone responded saying they already have to Mangold, and Mangold's like, if you feel that is the case, if you feel the f- filmmakers are just corporate tools and powerless, then why bitch at us? In the case <laughs> of Ryan, in the case of Ryan Johnston and Chris McQuarrie, uh, I'll talk about Chris McQuarrie in a sec. I assure you these cats are not owned. They actually fight your battles behind the scenes. The fervor of some attacks has an evangelical ferocity. Now, I get it because for many folk, including me, the Star Wars saga holds tremendous spiritual power similar to a religious text. But we must remember to try to handle our disappointments the way Yoda might as opposed to Darth. Love that quote. And honestly, like I know I'm probably in the minority here, but um, for The Last Jedi, like I... Fucking respect the shit out of him for taking- Dude, having we love the balls that movie. To, yeah, we like, both love that movie. Admittedly, like, I'm starting to see a lot of the flaws other people have, but, like, what I fucking love about it is how many- How he's willing to just take fucking risks, dude. They took so many risks. Some of them were swings and misses, but some of them, I think, were great. And if we just keep rehashing the same shit over and over- It's just going to get so repetitive, and I love trying new things. But, I dude, think Star we, Wars- Star Wars is about experience, um, and like when we experienced that midnight session, like uh, the Last Jedi, we were not thinking about the problems. Like, it, like okay, like you said, there are a few flaws in it, but I mean, when we watched it with that group of like other Star Wars fans, and like we all cheered when Ray and Kylo went back to back and like fucked up the throne room. Yeah, like it was, it was, it was awesome, dude. Like it was just such a good experience, and we came out and we were like buzzing, like we were fucking. Wrapped. Man, I can't get like this. That movie just keeps giving me flashbacks to like the way people talk about Theater Menace with like, it ruined my childhood. But for some people, that movie made their childhood, bro. And like, yeah, exactly. I think a lot, of the, a lot of the reports you hear of people who saw it back then, on the first time they saw it, they loved it. Maybe on repeat watching is not as much. But at the end of the day, like what makes Star Wars Star Wars is that sense of discovery of new worlds, of new monsters, of new creatures, of new characters. That's what makes Star Wars so exciting and amazing and mysterious and wonderful. And if you want to, if you want to take all that shit away by rehashing the same old shit, then these directors aren't killing Star Wars. It's you. It's the people who want to take away what makes this so fucking magical and special. If you want to stay restricted to your canon and your law and, oh, in the expanded universe, this this thing happened. was like, fuck you. Fuck that shit. I want to see something brand new and exciting because that's what I like about... That's the point of science fiction films in general and adventure films. You're meant to... It's the sense of discovery and it, that's yeah. the magic, you know? Um, but what's oh, really fucking it up is... So if you hate a film, don't like record a podcast like this if you want. Do a little YouTube video where you can bitch about it and you can like have your own little echo chamber. But don't harass the people making it. Like when we saw um I forgot her name, the chick who played Rose who left Kelly Twitter. Marie Tran. Dude, she did not deserve that. That's fucked. No. That's sincerely fucked. And always people okay, who okay. like they hold <laughs> <laughs> I need to rein you in. <sighs> okay, but what I want to get to is I'm seeing with these franchise films the shit that's sort of motivating a lot of hate i feel a lot of the time it's not just that it's people with agendas like people who hate feminism or just seeing females do well or careful. other shit like that <laughs> i don't want to get too man. much but it's like <laughs> try and detach like it's fucking art an artist is going to make art based right. on their experiences let them I- 
be artists. Completely agree. Um, just before as well, before we leave this, um, I did say that I was going to talk about Christopher McQuarrie. So Christopher McQuarrie's, yes. um, he's an awesome director, man. Like I was telling you about this guy the other day. Um, he just directed Mission Impossible Fallout, um, which is getting amazing reviews across the board. He directed the last Mission Impossible. Um, he directed Jack Reacher, the first one. I recommend checking that out. Really, really good. It's the best uh, Jai Courtney you'll ever see. Um <laughs> But he also went on to say, um, he also went on to say, uh, he, well, he talked about Marvel. Um, he's like, what Marvel have done is pretty amazing, but the temptation to follow that sort of insane success is very powerful. You can feel the industry narrowing its focus almost, almost daily. And I feel, I fear we're conditioning an audience to some very specific appetites. We're also spawning a very toxic fan subculture. A movie can't just resonate with more or less people now. It has to be the greatest thing ever or it's a disappointment. Other Mm -hmm. movies are deemed great for reasons that have nothing to do with quality. What do you think about that? Other movies are deemed great for reasons that have nothing to do with quality. That is an interesting statement. It leads me to feel a few different things about a few different parts. Um, I think earlier on when he was talking about, um, how everything has to be big and epic and, and whatever, it's kind of like what we're talking about the other week, um, with our winter soldier review, just a little cross promotion there, go check it out. At the very end, we, we talked with, um, with Colin about, uh, Marvel fatigue and I, and I was, and I sort of mentioned how like, you know, we, we saw upgrade and loved it. And something I love about that is. Doesn't it's not too over CGI'd and Marvel fied, which I feel like has happened to like the Jurassic Park films and stuff. I like Marvel when they're Marvel. I don't want to see people just spit painting with the same paintbrush a lot. So I, I do agree, like they, they, they've um, with what he's saying in the first part of that statement, where I we I want these studios to not feel that pressure to be just like this one to paint with this one paintbrush. Um, Man, it was just, I, I remember text, I texted you the other day when we were talking about that movie, Mile 22. And is it 22? So 27. It's 22, right? 22. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. I'm looking at it. It's reminding me like the glory days of action films. And it's like, why aren't we seeing more of this? I want to see just cars flipping over with explosions. I don't need to see a talking um, fucking apricot. You know, with guns. What? <laughs> I don't want to say what? Raccoon or Tree. I wanted to come up with something original. Uh, Talking Apricot Man, coming to cinemas 2019, uh, directed by yours <laughs> truly. Uh, but yeah, that, that last part, um, I wish he was more specific, but he was talking about um, uh, movies being praised for certain qualities outside of the, the, f- the film itself or something to that effect. Is that He said something like that? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. What it, do you like, think he's doesn't- getting out there? I think I think he's talking about it's kind of like cult movies, um, you know, movies that are based on things other than sort of like quality that kind of find a, a home. Like, do you know right. what I mean? So, like, yeah. The Room is seen as a as a great film, but it's not good. It's yeah, great for the wrong yeah. reasons or something. Um, well, what, like- what I feel like that I think maybe because we're living in this fucking politicized world, like political agendas and stuff. Like, I was seeing this um, people talk about Ant Man and the Wasp the other day. And they were bringing it down because it wasn't feminist enough. And I was like, Ugh. I was like okay, well, Wait, what that might mean? be a bit oh. far. Because they're like, it's, it's, I guess I slightly touched on it in our, our review, but I didn't mean like that. But I, I, I don't find it a problem. The fact that, you know, I it's called Ant-Man the Wasp, but it kind of feels like an Ant-Man film. It's not really about the Wasp. And this, but this no, was but an article. It feels more, no, that's wrong. It feels more like a Wasp film. Hard disagree, man. What's Hell. a character? What's a character arc? Where's any scene with her like she just find- being a character? Sh- the whole thing is her looking for her mother. Yeah, but like, we're not okay. going to get into this. We're never we're in not, her point not, of view, we're, though. We're, we're always not, we're, in, not, we're seeing that, her that story mean, through the eyes of not, Paul Rudd's character. We're not going to get into this. I'm, I'm moving on to the next thing. Are, are you done? Uh, <laughs> well, well, well to, to wrap this up, what are you, what are your thoughts on um, this statement? I mean, I, like it's all we we already talked about it, man. I think, uh, I think, I think people are just being too harsh. Like, uh, you don't. I mean, it, like you said, it's art, and art is meant to be interpretive. Um, you don't go and attack or abuse the artist. 
Like you just don't. If you don't, if you then made something that you don't like, then you just don't like it. Then yeah. It's not going to change. Like you don't see Ryan Johnson going to Subway and giving you shit for making a bad sandwich. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> imagine if. <laughs> fuck. Imagine that happened. Like George Lucas just comes in. Heard you uh, talk shit about my movie. Well, uh, you're shit at making pizza. Um, exactly. He sounds nothing like that, by the way. Um, <laughs> let's move on because I've I've had a couple beers and I'm I'm good to. Yeah. All right. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, who was uh, nominated for Best Actor in Call Me By Your Name. Yes. Um, I think our friend Daryl will like this one. <laughs> Daryl um, fucking loves that human being. Yeah. So, um, the classic movie Dune is being remade by none other than Denis Villeneuve, who's absolutely killing the game right now. Um, he obviously directed Blade Runner 2049. He directed Sicario, Arrival, Prisoners, etc. Um, now, Zoe, yeah, I'm, I'm not very familiar with Dune. Um, tell us about this. What am I missing out on? What are your okay. thoughts? So, Dune is based on a classic series of kind of like science fiction novels uh, by Frank Herbert, I believe his name is. Um, and it was made into a movie, a pretty famous movie, originally directed by David Lynch. Um, I think that was, yeah, it was in 1984. It was directed by David Lynch and it kind of got like this following. Um, it had a mini series after that called Children of Dune, um, which combined the second and third books from the series, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune. Um, so yeah, Timothy Chalamet has been added to it. This kid's getting work now, now that he's been kind of recognized by the, <laughs> the Academy, I guess. Um, well, like learned said, too. like he's fucking gangster as shit when it comes to acting. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Call Me By Your Name, but I've seen him in Lady Bird. He was good in Lady Bird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, so the, 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 remakes- last, the, the credits of Call Me By Your Name, you know how you usually expect it to cut to black with text? It's just an yeah. uncut shot of this dude crying by a fireplace as the credits roll. And okay, he does it for text- like what? It's. Fuck, he's got some acting chops, this guy, man. That that sounds super Oscar, Oscar bait. <laughs> um, it, it, it is, but it's. I, I think that's why good. I didn't watch it, just because it sounded like Oscar bait, and it didn't really win anything, so I was really happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Yeah, let's move on. Zombieland Two has been confirmed. Emma Stone and Woody Harrelson are returning. Uh, what do now you think? Now this, this this film's got a. I wouldn't say it's a huge fan base, but it's like a, it feels like a cult fan base. Yeah. It's a bit like a like a cult hit to me. Um, mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I never saw the fascination with that film. I thought I it was it. okay. I thought it was yeah. all right. I didn't think it was Sorry, the I second wanna, coming of Jesus. I just want to just quickly clarify. Um, it's not only Woody Harrelson and Emma Stone that are returning. It's also Jesse Eisenberg and Abigail Breslin. So pretty much everyone except Bill Murray. Yeah. All not, four, that Mark, um, not that he had to return. Well, he was dead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, spoiler was, alert. Yeah. Um, the big question is: um, Are there still Twinkies around? Oh man, uh, I think uh, I think he's uh, now onto the snowball. What was it, snowballs? Is that what they were called? I can't remember, but that's the question that people want to know. That people want to know, and they want answers. Zoheb, where are the Twinkies? <laughs> where are the where Twinkies? Are they? That's a big Twinkie. Um, but um, yeah, like I was never a huge fan of this film. I never really saw the the fuss, I but I understand. Like, I didn't. I didn't hate it. I think it was all right. But I think oh. I understand that. Like people fucking love that movie, man. If anything, I'm surprised it took so long to get a sequel. Um, but you know, I guess comedies don't always. Um, it's not super common for them to get sequels. But yeah, you stoked for this? I'm stoked. Um, you know, if if they can find a good way to go to go with it I'm, I'm down for it because the first one was fun that's it it was just fun it was a good time so I, th- I think my question yeah. is first of all where do they go with the story and two something I really liked about that film was like the rules like are we going to learn more of those numbered rules that he has um because that was kind of a nice hook and I nice really like the rules yeah yeah like like was it number one was cardio or something and number two is fuck I can't remember but it was it was pretty good yeah, man, it was good. Um, all right, let's move on. Men in Black 4 has a cast and a release date. Um, so, the Men in Black Men in Black 4 is going to open on June 14, 2019, which is less than a year. Uh, and it's also starring, get this, uh, three ladies. I don't know this. Chris Hemsworth. Who? Chris Whoa. Hemsworth. 
Uh, you know uh, what? Tessa He's been Thompson. Won- oh, okay, okay. Let me talk. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to give you some like you, live reactions because I, I, I don't know this I know, news. I know. I know. I know. Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson from uh, Thor Ragnarok and Creed uh, and Westworld. Uh, and also yeah. the one that you're probably going to lose your shit over, uh, Kumail Nanjiani. What? Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Okay. I hope, yeah. I, I hope it's actually him and he's not just like voicing a dumb alien or something. Because he he voiced the he voiced the fucking orc <laughs> in um Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> Was Hold there on, more? Are you ready for this? Uh, the hashtag show broke the news that Kamal Nanjiani will be playing Pawnee, a funny, wisecracking, sex-driven alien from uh, a civilization uh, that I exists on a chessboard. <laughs> it's so predictable of Hollywood, right? They get a guy with the yeah. funny little voice, and but they don't want to show. Uh, I guess they can't have more than. I guess Will Smith has to stand out and I don't know. Fuck. Like it feels racist, but I can't explain why <laughs> it just I'm, feels uh, racist I'm, to I'm, me. I'm down. Look, I'm down. It's more of a, it feels, I think it's more of a spinoff than it is a sequel. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm down for why, another man in black. Why is it a spinoff? Is it called uh, men in black four? Well, it's, Wait, I is I don't Tommy know Lee Jones a, in it? No, they're not. Like, that's what I'm oh, saying. It might be a spinoff. So, that's offensive to me. If there's no Tommy Lee Jones, I guess, I don't know. He didn't seem that keen on the franchise. The last two films, you could tell they were trying to write him out to make it more focused on- Well, Tommy Will Lee Smith. Jones look, looks like an old oak wood tree right now. So, <laughs> like, that okay, guy good is point. aged. Good point. Yeah. He looks like a melting um, candle. But yeah, Chris Hemsworth, he's been like really trying to get his head in the comedy game now. Um, and seeing him- part yeah, And he does with- well. Oh no, dude, he's fucking great, man. He's um, funny admitt- shit, yeah. Admittedly, he always plays the same character. It's like the, oh, uh, I'm a dumb but attractive. Like, you know, it's very like- Well, he's always like, going to be what's attractive. The, what's, the, what's the male version of a bimbo? The 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 dumb, fuck the dumb muscular guy, you know? No, fuck, fuck boy. boy. <laughs> fuck boy implies that he's trying to fuck someone over, though, you know? He's just like, he's, like, no, the, he's, he's the dumb really. blonde- He's the dumb blonde. But you know what? He's good at doing that. So fucking props Matt, to him. Are you keen for Men in Black? Bro, I love Men in Black. I love- When I was a kid- The um, first like one? The Holy shit. Grade, it's so good. It still holds dude. up. Yeah. Even though it's all about cockroaches, it's somehow still good. Um, every time I see yeah. a pug, I think of that fucking movie. <laughs> um, the, second, <laughs> the second one is fucking garbage from my recollection. And the yeah. third one is- also kind of not as great the third one had a really good ending um, the third one was miles better than the second one mm. um which was the one where oh man the worst joke i've ever seen it's it's so bad it loops around to good i think it's the second one or third one but he's fighting a bunch of guys and he's trying to kick someone in the nuts but they're not there he's like he's a bald chinian <laughs> and so he pulls down a scarf in this alien's face I love they're that fucking joke. balls <laughs> And he punches him in the balls. But I just love that the love fact that, that somewhere out there is an alien race called the Bolchinians. Hello. You know what? That's I like, love it, man. That's, you know what? It's something such a humor good joke. Is? That's Rick and Morty style humor right there. Like, yeah. Straight up. Like that, that's that Men in Black 2, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I thought so. That, and I had the, the snake chick as the bad guy. I think she was like a snake, right? Selena. Yeah. Um, oh, who played that? Who played her? Lara Flynn Boyle. Oh, snap. But yeah, man, yeah. I- I'm down. I'm down. Um, I again as a kid. Did you ever watch the cartoon? No, I never watched the cartoon. They actually. had a cartoon. I, heard it was I think good. it was on like Cheese TV. It was pretty good. Like surprise oh, from my little kid brain. I'll probably watch it now and think it's terrible. But from my recall, yeah. I loved it as a kid. And those um, well, those little freaky, freaky aliens. They got like six arms and they kind of oh, look yeah, like cockroaches the, the standing fucking, up. I can't remember they what they called them. They love their coffee. Them. They're always drinking coffee. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm down. Before we go down fucking memory lane, let's move on. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> they love their coffee. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like All us, right. so have. Okay. Right. I know, I know, I know. Uh, okay, this is going <laughs> to... This one, I'm shaking my head out a little bit. I'm never like... Okay, I'm never like, why are they making this? Or this is unnecessary. I'm never like that. Because I'm always like, you know, if someone wants to make something, let them make it. But holy shit, this is fucking weird. 
Uh, Thai cave rescue movie eyed by director John M. Chu. So they're going to make a movie about those 12 boys who were trapped in the Thai cave last week. Literally last week. What? I mean, what? So I think I might be able to bring some, possibly some humanity to the situation. Right. Oh, just just quickly, um, John John M. Chu directed uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation, which I maintain is awesome. I love that movie. Um, That's the one with uh, the Rock, right? That's the, the one with rock, the Rock, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, franchise. Yeah. Um, what do they call him? Franchise Viagra. You know, he he revitalizes that that, that franchise for you. Um, yeah. He's done that a few times, but um, look. I could be completely fucking wrong here, but there's no way they've got a script already. <laughs> there's no way they've got a story. I think <laughs> I think what this means, it doesn't mean they're working on it right now and we're going to get it in six months' time. I think this just means they've secured the rights as a possibility just in case they want to make a movie down the road. Now, they probably want to make it as quickly as possible so it stays recent. We saw that with the Boston bombings where we got fucking two movies like a year later. Um... I don't know if it's going to go that crazily. That was like three years later. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, they've already yeah, got a director to mention, attached not to, to mention, this. Like, not to mention Patriot's Day is really good. Um, Dude, I love Patriot's Day. I haven't seen um, Boston Strong. Is that the other one? But, um, yeah, it's stronger. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But um, you know what, dude? Um, I, I think they're just trying to grab the rights as quickly as possible, put it out in the public eye so they have the safety of knowing they have that story. I don't expect them to make a movie just like that um, because mm. those kids are probably going to go on like, I don't know, fucking 60 minutes and get paid a hundred grand for the, for an interview or something a couple times. And I don't know, some other shit first. Um, look, clearly someone thinks there's a story there that needs to be told. Um, maybe it'll be good. Um, fuck. Happy to hear they're not all dead, but um, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I think Look, I'm I'm glad that they all got let, got out. You know, it's- yeah, like that's that's a happy ending if um, if I ever heard one. But you know, don't get yeah. don't get don't get all riled up too much yet because I think this is just um, it's like the emoji movie. You know, they made that movie so they could secure the rights of the phrase emoji movie. It's just a legal thing. No, going that on. movie that movie has one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that's what happens when you create films based not on- Not a great comparison. Leg- on, on legal- on No, but it's it's created for like a legal purpose, you know? Um, that's that's the shit that, that happens when you do that. Which, by the way, apparently that movie exists. By doing that, it ended up shutting down production of the Popeye animated film. And that was amazing test footage. And I know I'm off topic, but I want them to make a fucking Popeye Let's movie. Let's move on. Yeah, okay. Let's move on. <laughs> We're not talking about this. Uh, Black Widow movie signs Kate Shortland as director. Kate Shortland, Australian Australian director. What do you think about this? Fuck yeah. She's done like a spy film before. She's yep. she's female. Um, she's got all the right makings of a... Um, how do I say it? A, a politically correct casting choice for directing, um, I feel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and, and she seems like, on paper, the right person for the job. We don't know what the story is. I believe it's an it's a prequel or an origin story, I think. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe so, that's speculation. Um, there's rumors that it's going to take place in the early 2000s. So, I think that it might take place after just after Captain Marvel, which is set in the 90s. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. it begs a few questions. Yeah, One, but I mean, yeah. How 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 back do we go? Are we seeing her origin story? Um, and two, um, if they're going to give it the Captain Marvel treatment, who are we going to see popping up? If it's she works for Shield, so you know maybe we don't see Captain America, but maybe we see Nick Fury, maybe we see Coulson, maybe we see um, fucking Maria Hill, um, all that stuff. Down for it. I just want them to do it like I really want it to be like Winter Soldier. Mm. That's the whole spy shieldy. It's a very shield. Unless they do, it's like about how she joined shield. Because then the film's going to basically be a lighthearted. Um, well, to be honest, I think it's going to be Lawrence her. Film? Oh what? yeah, fucking Red Sparrow. Yeah, um, it might just be a lighthearted think- Red Sparrow. 
Well, I think it's going to be, yeah, in Russia, set in Russia with Hawkeye because, like, they have a history in Russia, so. Oh, um, yeah, that's that's the big one. Like, yeah, they haven't, the big thing about those two characters is that they're, like, best friends and we haven't really seen much of that in the films. I'd love to yeah. see a film of just Black Widow and Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, uh, look, a female Australian director has been fucking signed on to a Marvel movie. Like, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, you know, so. Oh, she's um, a killing it. Yeah, I'm absolutely fucking proud of that. So for sure, definitely, I'm I'm on I'm on board for that one. Uh, moving on, um, the Joker movie, the Joker origin movie, actually, uh, has been greenlit. So this is the one that's directed by Todd Phillips and is going to be produced by Martin Scorsese, and confirmed also, uh, Joaquin Phoenix will be playing the Joker. Ay 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 ay. Uh, also, sorry, just quickly, written by Scott yeah. Silver, uh, who directed, uh, who wrote Eight Mile and The Fighter. So, pretty good credentials there. Bro, on paper, this film is fucking incredible. Um, yeah. This film probably, possibly will be fucking incredible. But here's a few things that I'm just going to sprinkle out on the table. And admittedly, this is all nerdy shit, but... This is ultimately, to me, Warner Brothers saying we give up on Expanded Universe. Like, you're making this spin-off film to about it, and after all the shit that went down with Jared Leto, and all these promises that they keep breaking about the whole Expanded Universe thing, it feels like they're giving up. And then on the other side, it's like, again, this just feels like DC throwing shit to the wall and seeing what sticks, because they just like, if we just have a lot of famous people attached to it, it'd be great. But it sounds like... I don't want to say oscar but, like, these are people with strong credentials who not who usually would not touch a superhero film. Scorsese, fucking Eight Miles, a fucking great drama film um, with, with a music background to it. Um, fuck, like, it seems like... It's like, what, what are they... How does this fit into the grand scheme of things? I feel like maybe it doesn't. Like, and maybe that's intentional. And the last point I've got to make is... I don't want to see a Joker origin film. I've read the Joker origin comics. Yeah, they're good, I guess. But like what makes the Joker so interesting is the mystery behind him. Don't take away the mystery. And how does this affect the other films? Uh, so if you take that nerd shit aside, I'm sure the movie's going to be fucking amazing. These people wouldn't have signed on if it's not going to be a good film. But at the same time, I'm just like, okay. Um, not yeah. sure why you're doing that, but yeah. okay. I um, uh, like I said, man, I'm I'm never usually like, uh, um, why is this being made? Like I'm, I'd never really do that. So I'm actually on board for this movie. Um, you know, uh, like the the talent that's that's come onto it has kind of like pretty moved me uh, to the positive end of things. Uh, plus, um, you know, it's been confirmed that. It's going to um, center around a failed comedian who bomb who uh, becomes the clown prince of crime after bombing with audiences. So that's that's the killing joke right there. It's the killing joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to. There's see- There's already a movie on the killing joke. No. It's animated, yeah, but, it, but that's yeah. that's that's a that's a terrible movie because it's fucking literally <laughs> twenty minutes of killing joke and then you know sixty minutes of something else. So of um, that girl wanting to fuck Batman for some reason. Yeah, which yeah. happens. Um, but yeah, uh, it, look, I'm, I'm, I'm more than on board for seeing a Killing Joke story. Like, I don't really, you know, The Dark Knight, the movie The Dark Knight still works if you, even if you make this movie because that's a whole different Joker. Like, you know, I, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see this. Like, Look, it's probably going to be a fucking great film, but it sends to me a larger picture of DC don't know what to do with their their, oh, their yeah, franchises. Um, we're not, their film we're not franchises. disagreeing there. Yeah, we're not yeah. disagreeing there at all. And that um, bums me out on a whole picture, but that doesn't mean this yeah. film's not going to be fucking amazing. Like, when I hear all this attachment cast and stuff, it, it sounds like they're going for a maybe a very different audience. Mm. Maybe this isn't for the comic book fans. Well, maybe there's there's, is- there's rumors there's rumors that it'll be rated R. Um, so mainly for adults, um, it'll be low budget as well. Um, which means they're going for kind of like a Logan kind of feel. Um, yeah, it like it's more realistic. Yeah. So Joaquin Phoenix talked about, uh, like signing onto it 
uh, speaking about Todd Phillips, the director who also directed the Hangover movies, he said he seems to have a very interesting understanding of of this world and what he's trying to say. And so there is something very appealing about that and working with him. Sorry, something very appealing about that and working with him on this particular project. It feels unique. It is its own world in some ways, and maybe, mostly, it scares the fucking shit out of me or something. It might as well be the thing that scares you the most. So, yeah. It's like apparently, a horror you know, film, it's a, no way. Yeah, it's, yeah, so, yeah, well, Phoenix <laughs> literally goes on to say, I wouldn't quite classify this as, like, any genre. I wouldn't say it's a superhero movie or a studio, studio movie. Uh, it feels unique, and I think more than anything, and probably... Well, this doesn't make sense. Probably the most important thing is Todd seems very passionate about it and very giving, and so that's exciting. And look, Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I have no, I have no, uh, no problem uh, about his being cast as, as the Joker. Um, you know, Jared Leto. It I doesn't feel like anyone has an issue to be honest when Jared Leto got cast. That was a big thing. That was a fucking massive thing on the internet. But like this, I don't hear anything. I think from some people it's just confusion because we've had the issues with Ben Affleck and it kind of seems like he wants to leave the franchise and and um, Jared Leto had a um, I know reactions were mixed on his performance but also he had a mixed reaction to what ha- well actually it wasn't mixed he was pretty upset with how they cut out a lot of his stuff um, I don't know how attached he is to the character anymore I didn't have a problem with his Joker except for maybe some of the tattoos and um, overall, I thought his performance is pretty decent. I, I know I'm in a minority there. Um, you know what I want from this film? By the way, it's described to me. Uh, if, if anyone who hasn't seen it, look it up. Just the images even. Uh, a film called The Man That Laughs, which was like one of the inspirations behind the character of the Joker. It's a black and white, weird film that's creepy as shit with this guy just is smiling all the time. It's fucking scary. And apparently that was the, the, the inspiration behind the Joker. I want to see something like that going on here. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. It would be. Um, yeah. Moving on to our final story. Lots uh, of news this today. Is, yeah, I know. This is, this, this is a bit older. Uh, Billy D. Williams is back for Star Wars Episode Nine, um, And, of course, Billy, Billy D. Williams is Lando Calrissian, the original Lando Calrissian. I take it by your clapping, you like that news. <laughs> Mate, Lando should have been in Force Awakens. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of, he like, you know, with we should have seen the whole team together. It's going to be kind of weird to see him there without everybody else, except for Chewie and the Falcon. Um, I kind of would have liked to see him see him with Han and Luke and Leia, but just the fact that they're bringing back Someone else is an OG, especially Lando, who's an important character to so many people. About fucking time. I'm really stoked for this. You know, um, I can kind of see... Okay, look, I mean, I absolutely can't wait for this movie because it's J.J. Abrams back in the saddle again. Yes. But I can, I can kind of see, um, number one, the Millennium Falcon being destroyed. Number Ooh. two. Number yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Lando. The one Lando is the one that destroys it because he's flying it to save Ray somehow or someone save someone's sacrifice. Oh shit! So yeah, I can oh, kind yeah. of and see something like that happening. I want to see in that scene at some point he somehow mentions L three, so it's a little hint to the solo movie. Oh, I dig it! I dig it! Like dig it's it. all connected, man. It's all interconnected. <laughs> Yeah, and just just um, briefly, um, Kerry Russell has also signed on to Star Wars Episode Nine. So Kerry Russell is from a American. Sorry, it's from a show called The Americans. Um, she was also in Mission Impossible Three, which was J.J. Abrams' first directed movie. So first movie he directed. She's so a pretty good you actress. Fucking love. Uh, you that's love my that fa- movie, hey? That's my favorite fucking one of my favorite action movies of all time. Like seriously, it's so good. Um, but yeah, it's also. Um, and apparently it's an action heavy role so that'll be really interesting cool yeah yeah, uh, yeah unless you got anything else to talk about man we might uh, wrap it up here um, I'll just quickly if, if anyone's out there interested um, there's been an ongoing story with Stan Lee you know the creator of many of Marvel's characters um, as, as some may recall um, a few months ago there was some case about um, 
elder abuse. Um, like the guy's really, really old. Um, but he's had a lot of trouble with his social media. Um, people have been like impersonating him and stuff. And there was an incident recently where he showed up to court um, and there was not one, but two legal teams claiming to represent him. And the judge was like, what the fuck? Um, and it just seems to be like a lot of people have been trying to steal his money or take advantage of him, including family. Um, there was an incident apparently where a collector actually stole his blood and um, used the blood to sign some memorabilia and sold it. Um, and so, yeah, this this poor guy, He's um, there was, there was a report saying that he just wanted to go to bed and pretty much not wake up he's he's very upset but um it seems to be possibly there's a light at the end of the tunnel oh fuck i did not mean that jesus Double christ man. That. but i mean i mean there's a positive to it all i meant um sorry i had to really correct myself there i, I apologize um uh but the brightness is the, the bright side is um he's dropped a, a i think it's a billion dollar lawsuit against power entertainment which is his company that he started um, after he, he wasn't really working with Marvel and, um, uh, they've, they've, they've made some sort of agreement. It seems to be with the way he's represented online. And, um, he's actually got a new, um, I think it's a comic series that's going to be, I think, I think a part of it's coming up. If it's not on already, it's about to come up on through power entertainment's website. I'm going to get some news about that at, um, Comic-Con and he started to post videos to Twitter again. Um, uh, just talking about, you know, he talked about the other day about Steve Ditko and his sad passing away, RIP. Um, and yeah, and if you want to have a, a deep dive, look through his Twitter and you can see like the shit that's gone down with this guy. He's, he's, um, he, he was talking about how his Facebook was hacked or hijacked or something and how he's only using Twitter now. It's, it's really interesting but it's also kind of bizarre to think that someone so successful who's touched so many lives is going through so much trouble. There's a story that apparently he was held hostage at some point. It's just crazy. And um, uh, someone who I know you love in particular, um, Kevin Smith even apparently made a public, reached out and said, hey, if you want to live with me, you can do that. Because people were, for a while were very concerned with um, Stan's safety, like not from his age, but from just people trying to take advantage of this guy. And it's just really sad to me to say because he's such a, uh, a fucking inspiration. And I didn't mean to ramble this long. I thought it was just going to be a sentence. But um, uh, if you're interested, definitely do some reading up about it. Have a look through his Twitter. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting, ongoing, developing story. Boom. Think, yeah. uh, think we might leave the listeners to ponder <laughs> with yeah, that let's... fucking dread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, didn't mean to end on such a dark fucking note on that um, doom and gloom but you know what comic cons this weekend um lots of exciting news i'm sure come out from that so that's something to look forward to yeah man for sure uh matt uh where can we find you um you can find me on instagram at bella matt um i'll be posting a lot lately about um an upcoming short film i'm working on um which is a comedy which will be sh- pretty exciting um and i th- think you're going to be seeing a bit more of me on these news episodes coming up uh more on that later um in the meantime where can we find midnight double feature uh yeah you can find oh god colin's so good at doing this i'm just like okay so there's Uh, a facebook i can do it i can do it i can do it (laughs) so you can find us on facebook obviously uh we have two pages we have midnight double feature where we post all of our official shit and then we've got midnight Uh, sorry the after party which is where we post all our memes and just fuck around Um, you can find us on Instagram our Instagram page is doing really well Um, that's that's at midnight double feature Uh, you can also find us now on YouTube Uh, all of our videos are now available on YouTube they automatically get pushed out to YouTube so uh, if you're living under a rock or if you know someone who's living under a rock and doesn't listen to podcasts then YouTube's the place to go Uh, we're also on Google Play Spotify basically wherever you can you know listen to shit Um, email email yes good one Jesus Christ got your Uh, back Jack if you have any if you have any questions or queries uh if you want us to improve or some shit whatever uh send us an email uh midnight double feature at gmail.com um and also just in regards to the big news hopefully uh 
we'll be able to reveal that sometime next week. Um, yeah, so that'll be that'll be pretty good. Uh, Matt, say bye to the London people. Later. Thanks for listening, guys. Really appreciate it. Catch you next time.